still working my way through this absolutely massive pile right here, and I did ask you guys what you wanted to see. You said this right here. That, of course, is the Robo Doll Ingram Unit 1. And this right here was sent on to me directly by 3-0. So this video right here would not be possible without those absolutely beautiful people. So if you do want one of your own, I will put a link to the product down there in the description. Now let's get to it. So anyway, first off, I will mention that this right here is a figure, not a model kit. So it comes right out of the box, just like what you're seeing here. Well, battery's not included. And without a single doubt, the Ingram from Pat Labor is the coolest police car to ever, ever exist. And also one awesome aspect, just in case you didn't know, this is designed after what a Japanese police car looks like. So that is something I think is so awesome. But anyway, first off, let's take a look at the box. Anyway, that right there is the box. We've got some art in the front of the Ingram unit one itself. It opens up to show the figure when it is in there. Dog hair is not included. And all in all, that's that. So it's been quite a long, 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 long time since I've seen anything Pat Labor. But this right here, as far as I know, is the original variant of the Ingram. Ingram 1 from the original OVA and the detailing on this is perfect. I mean, it looks exact 100% exact. So let's give it a quick 360 spin. So there is the full spin and this thing looks phenomenal I will mention right off the bat that this is a hefty metal build right here The paint is absolutely perfect. The detailing looks great and all of which I will take a closer look at very, very soon. Once again, this has that Japanese police car aesthetic, which looks so awesome. And I will mention that I did build one of the old Bandai Master Grades quite a long time ago. I was extremely disappointed by them. They don't do a whole lot. But this right here, this is impressive. Even zooming in on the head, there's all that detail inside of the visor. You can see somewhat into the cockpit area and all in all. This thing looks off the charts cool. Getting in a bit closer so we can see all that detailing and the insignia, that Japanese police insignia on the front looks perfect in gold. And either side of that, then we've got those little metal grill pieces. These are actual little metal grills, which is cool. We've got some clear plastic sections just right there. These two parts right here can pop up for more lights. These ones don't actually light up though. They are just clear red plastic parts. All around the waist section, we've got even more car-like aspects, including this very accurate looking Japanese license plate. We've got this little Little wire section down here painted in silver so if it needs to pull or tow something it's good to go some beautiful anime accurate decals all the way around the upper section there looking great on the shoulders on the front all in all looking good and that high gloss white paint on top of that metal finish looks and feels amazing and speaking of feels amazing this is solid as a rock and it is made out of metal this thing is heavy there is a lot of heft to this figure right here to pop on the lights it's simple enough you can just lift off off these sections here there's a button you can press just to turn them on like that and they slot back in like so so we've got two red flashing LEDs and one orange one I will mention that the batteries are not included so you do have to get little button batteries which are let me check that actually so what you will need is AG1 batteries moving up to the head there and the detail is killer that super iconic Pat Labor big bunny ear looks fantastic even including some tiny tiny decaling up there too there's even a whole lot of detail going on in behind that green clear visor. This thing looks so cool. Oh, I almost forgot. The sections in between all the joints are actually made out of a soft cloth material that moves around with the actual figure. So this is very nice. If you've ever built one of the model kits, they were hard bits of plastic, maybe rubber. I can't really remember. I think it was just plastic and didn't really allow for articulation, but this cloth right here does not get in the way. That is something I really like. Moving on to the accessories now, and here is the Ingram Unit 1 with absolutely everything that it comes with, and it comes with quite a lot. Whoops! This as well, somehow forgot it. So what we've got in here is a pilot. This is a good setting for the scale of those weapons because that's a big shotgun right there. So speaking of the shotgun, that is the riot gun. We've got the hand revolver cannon, an extended and retracted form of the stun stick, the shield, seven alternate hands. That makes a grand total of nine with the two fists we've seen already attached to the robot. We also have that alternate faceplate that is a face guard, and of course, that right there is a stand, and I love when figures and kits come with a stand. First off, taking a closer look at the pilot figure, for something quite small, it is very nicely detailed. Even in on the face there, you've got those tiny little lines around the irises on the eye. Very nice. This, of course, is a Zumi Noah, and as for stick her into the bot, we just gotta pop up this little segment. The chest segment slides out, flips up. This part then opens out like this. We We've got a very nicely detailed cockpit in there. And then I assume she should just fit up in there. Yeah, simple as that. Close it up. 
and there we go. And there we go. Next up in here, we've got that shield as well. This is in that awesome gloss white and gloss black. We've got metallic silver there. If you're wondering what it says on there, that is just the general Japanese for Metropolitan Police Department. That is Keishicho. Around the back then, we've got two pins for attaching it onto the arm. To do that, we just pop off these segments here. That's one. That is two. And then that just pops on just like so. So moving on to the hands in here, and they are fixed posed hands. They're just on ball joints. They can move around like this. So in order to hold the weapons, you just... Yeah, okay, we, we'll get to what that's about later. But anyway, they just pop off like so. We have a bunch of different holding hands, so we'll go through each one with each of the weapons. So first off, we've got this hand right here. This is for holding onto the riot stick. So that is the non-extended version. That particular variant can also be stored up inside the shield, just like that right there. And there is an example of it holding onto the extended version of the stun stick. So it holds onto that perfectly. These are nice and tight and you're gonna have no issues with that whatsoever. Now on to the guns. So first up there is the revolver cannon. I have to say that the concept of a giant revolver, like actual revolver, is brilliant. So awesome. Anyway, the paintwork on this is perfect. It looks great. It doesn't have any moving parts or anything like that. It's just one piece. Pops into the hand as simple as that right there and it's a very tight hold. And there is a quick example of what it looks like held in the hand of the Ingram one. Also back to that old extendo arm we saw earlier on. The whole purpose of this is that when that revolver cannon is not in use, it's stored away in the leg here. So basically the extendo arm is so that it can reach down to grab that while it's in there. So when it is not in use, it is just stored on that little rack segment in there. And this is pretty cool because this has a whole moving gimmick in here that brings the gun up and out from inside the leg. That is really nice. That combined with the fact that the Ingram can stretch its arm down is all pretty cool. And according to the instructions, that's what this little grabby grabby hand is for. For posing it, reaching down, about to grab it. So next up in here we've got the riot gun, which is even more awesome than the thought of a giant revolver because it's a giant shotgun. So this right here does have some moving parts, including the good old... Next up then, we've got a flip back stock segment and this little part that can move up like so. Once again, this pops into the hand simple as there is a dedicated hand for this, which is this one right here. And there is a quick example of what the Ingram Unit 1 looks like holding onto it. Next up then, we've got the alternate face section, which is the face guard. This isn't actually a clear piece there for the green. That is actually a metallic painted piece, as you can see from back there. So as for a bit of comparison, there is the standard version of the face plate and there's the head with the face guard faceplate attached. So to do this, it is really simple. You just pop off the head like that, then just take this piece out like that and slide the alternate one in like so. So simple and effective. So next up in here, then we've got this stand and this is very nicely designed. It has two moving parts, which is this extending part up here. That does lock in place in order to lower it. You have to push down this little part on the back. That's very, very nice. And we also have this segment here to move that. You just move this little button upwards and it can move back like that, lock into place and move forward like so. So that is pretty cool. We do have another part up here. This does not necessarily move. To angle this, you actually have to take this section out like this. There are some teeth-like sections inside of that, which will hold it in place when you realign it. So this you have to manually adjust by taking it in and out. To attach it to the Ingram, you just remove this part here off the butt, expose the butt hole, and then this segment just attaches in to the butt like that. So even though 3-0's Ingram 1 is one hefty metal boy, this stand has no problem holding it up in dynamic aerial poses. So that is definitely a very good thing. So before I move on to the build and articulation, I will mention though that the build is absolutely perfect. This is fantastic. For the most part, I think the outside parts like the armor is plastic, but all the internal structure is metal and it feels great. But before I actually get onto the articulation, I forgot to do a size comparison. So there it is beside a high grade Gunpla. There it is beside a master grade Gunpla. There it is beside a perfect grade Gunpla. There it is beside a Robot Damashi Veranime. There it is beside a Hexagear. 
here. There it is beside a Figma, a regular Funko Pop, a slightly bigger Funko Pop, and the MP44 Optimus Prime. But anyway, let's check out the articulation. So sadly, starting off, we've got no giggity giggity. This is just your basic ball joint, so that's that little bit of pivot, full rotation, down, up, and the basic movement you get from a ball joint. Once again, these little segments open up like so, and I'm not going to show you the whole cockpit spiel again. So as with the shoulders, we've got a ball joint here, as well as a little bit of a hinge section for moving it up and out of the way the arm like that. As for the shoulders, they move forward and back at that point there. As for how high the arm can raise up, if you align the shoulder armor right, you can get that up pretty high like that right there. Of course, we do have the rotation as well because of the cloth in here that does not go all the way around. It goes from there to there. It is pretty much the 360 just blocked a little by the fact that the cloth won't allow it. Next up then, there is that bend at the elbow, so that is pretty solid. The forearm has full rotation right here. Like we saw before, we've got that extendo arm, but that is only on the right hand side. And the wrist, of course, is a simple yet effective ball joint. Ab crunch is quite solid and sturdy. There it is all the way to the front, all the way to the back, so there isn't really a whole lot there, but there is a bit. There is no side to side, but we do have rotation like that. So once again, that is there to there only. At the hips then, we've got a solid kick up to the front. Actually, that goes up pretty much all the way. The same then round to the back. There's nothing to get in the way of that kick. We have a double jointed system in here, so it can get that armor in under there, so it can pull off the full splits. Combined with that joint in there, he can do some real ballerina stuff. As for the knee, that is double jointed. We've got a joint up top, a joint below that. Quite stiff, so it does hold its poses perfectly. We've got that opening segment with the moving gun action in the side of the right leg. Nothing, however, on the left leg. And down at the ankle, then we've got this moving bit of armor, a slight bit of up and down. And I have to say, the ankles are definitely the most limited aspect about this. So that is it all the way up. There it is all the way down. The pivot side to side is a little bit on the weak side. So for example, if you bring them all the way in, all the way in on this side then. When it comes to wide-legged poses, that's as far as the feet can go without lifting off the ground and looking a little bit awkward. But we do have a nice little bend at the toe here, so not all bad. When it comes to the build and the articulation, the build is solid as a rock. The articulation is very, very good, but it is a bit limited at the ankles and the neck. Besides that though, it's pretty cool. So that right there is it for the review of Three Zeros Ingram Unit 1. I'm entirely in love with it. It looks absolutely fantastic. If I was going to mention the only real down point, it's that the articulation at the ankles and the neck could be a little bit better, but at the same time, it's not like the Ingrams were completely over-the-top super robots or anything like that, so I do find it pulls off pretty much any of the poses that you'd want it to. Besides that, though, this thing looks beautiful. It will look fantastic in any robot collection, and honestly, this is the coolest looking police car of all time. Anyway, if you love Pat Labor, if you like the look of this right here, I will throw a link in the description so you can check it out. Once again, thanks to those absolutely fantastic people over at 3A and 30 for sending this on to me. Of course, thank you so much to you for watching this video, and as always, make sure to come back for more reviews, and I'll see you next time. Once again, all my thanks to each and every one of you guys. If it wasn't for you guys, this channel would not exist. So that's to everyone who watches these videos, hits that like button, and of course to those of you who support me on the channel memberships and Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Mark Wu, Kaiser721, Forged Horizons, Bulwick, Tyler Sanders, Caleb Engelhart, Halo Creator, and Hank Handsome.